Hi guys, uh, Mr. Jenkins here. Um, this will be my first uh, set of notes for Algebra 1. Uh, I'm going to hop right to it um, and just know that uh, I'm going to go pretty quick, quicker than in class because you guys can just pause these, rewind, uh, rewatch as needed. So I'm going to try to go pretty quick to keep this uh, video pretty short time-wise. Uh, so on that note, uh, I'll go ahead and get right to it. And hopefully this works for you guys. Okay, so our first assignment is going to be from section 8-2. We did 8-1 before we left, and now we're going to just hit the ground running. So as you can see, it's called multiplying and factoring. Uh, but more importantly, the learning targets are be able to multiply monomial by a polynomial. Remember, monomial is one term, polynomial, uh, two or more terms, and then factor a monomial from a polynomial. So two main things that we are going to focus on, and with that, we'll just go ahead and get right to it. Example one starts with multiplication. If we don't know how to multiply, then we won't know how to divide, which is factoring. Okay, so uh, this is just an example of the distributive property. Uh, if you like to draw the cherry stems, you can. I know we usually don't in class, but uh, that helps some people. So you can draw that like that if you would like. So our first product is going to be negative 1x cubed times 9x to the fourth. Negative 1 times 9 is negative 9. And then remember our exponent rules. So if we take x cubed times x to the fourth, we're adding exponents. So when I multiply those together, I get x to the seventh. That's my first term. My next term is the product of negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2 x to the 3 times x to the 2 is x to the 5. And then the last term, negative 1 times 7 is negative 7. And then uh, we just basically have x to the 3rd that needs to stay attached. Or you can think of that as x to the 3 times x to the 0. Um, so anyways, that's the final answer. Since there are no like terms, we can't really simplify that anymore. All right, next example, I'll show that as well. 5n times 3n uh, cubed is 15n to the 4. Okay, might be helpful there uh, to remember that n is also n to the 1. Okay, and then 5n times uh, negative n squared is negative 5n cubed or n to the 3rd. And then 5n times 8 uh, is plus 40 in. All right, so that's that. Like I said, feel free to pause, rewatch, rewind as needed. Okay, the next one is uh, this is just a supporting skill to be you being able to factor, finding that GCF. So I kind of think of this as a two step process, right? So if I want to know the GCF of this, this, and this, uh, then remember, that's the biggest factor that goes into all three evenly. So the first part of the process, I think about what's the GCF of the coefficients? So what's the GCF of 5, 25, and 45? Well, that's pretty easy. It is uh, 5. So that's part of my GCF. And then uh, how do we know what the GCF of your variables is? Well, you see they're all some power of x. So if that's the case, then you just choose the smallest power of x. In this case, that's x to the first. So the biggest factor that goes into all of them is 5x. I'll do one more. Uh, I'm going to skip ahead to c because there's an important thing that happens there. Uh, so if one of our factors is positive and one is negative, how do we know? Is that positive or negative? So basically you want, uh, if the lead sign, remember if they're in standard form, your highest degree term is going to be first. Uh, and if that is negative, then your GCF is negative. So because of this, uh, we're going to have a negative GCF. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put that down. So it's negative something. Uh, what goes into 1 and 15? Well, obviously just 1, so I'm not going to write negative 1. Uh, but that's understood uh, with the negative sign. And then what's my lowest power of w? w squared. 
So my overall GCF is negative W squared. Okay, we'll do a lot more with this when we factor. So I'm gonna skip B uh, in order to save a little bit of time. Okay, so example three is where we get to our second uh, learning target, actually factoring out a monomial. And this is the exact same thing as using the distributive property, uh, except we're working backwards, okay? So this would be like the answer in example one, we wanna give the question. So kind of like one of those Jeopardy questions I talk about sometimes in class. Step one is we wanna figure out what's the GCF. So that goes back to our last example. Biggest thing that goes into four, negative 24 and eight is four. I know it's positive because my lead, co my lead uh, coefficient is positive. And then my lowest power of X is one. So overall GCF is equal to four X. Okay, so your GCF always is kind of the front part of your answer. So our answer is gonna be in, in the form of 4X times the quantity of something, okay? So our first term is gonna be whatever 4X to the fifth over 4X is. So four over four is one, X to the five over X to the one, there we're subtracting exponents, so X to the fourth. So overall, x to the fourth. Uh, next one, minus 24 over 4x. Uh, negative 24 over 4 is negative 6. And then 3 minus 1 is 2, so negative 6x squared. Uh, and then 8x over 4x. 8 over 4 is 2. x over x is 1, so 2 times 1 is 2. My last term is just two. Or uh, in terms of exponent properties, we can think one minus one is zero. So x to the zero is just one. All right, so that would be my final answer there. Go a little bit uh, quicker on the next two. On the next one, your GCF is going to be, uh, looks like 3x squared. So that's gonna be the front part of my answer. And I'm gonna put my long parentheses. Okay, and then we go term by term. Nine X to the six over three X squared is gonna be three X to the four. 15 X to the four over three X squared is gonna be plus five X squared. Uh, and then 12 X squared over three X squared is just gonna be plus four. And guys, just at any point, once you feel like you've got this, it might be a good idea to pause and work ahead of me and then check like we do in class sometimes. I'm not going to leave time for that in the video. Like I said, just to cut down on total time of the video. On the next one, uh, notice that our lead coefficient is negative, so our GCF needs to be negative. Uh, and then uh, it's going to, so in this case, it's going to be negative 6x squared. So we have negative six X squared times the quantity. Uh, first term is just gonna be positive X squared. Next term is gonna be positive three uh, X. And then the last term is gonna be plus two. And then it's probably worth noting that, uh, you know, I can always check my answer whether this is a mental math step or actually write it out by just multiplying them out, right? So negative six X squared times X squared is gonna be negative six X to the fourth, good. Negative six X squared times three X is gonna be negative 18 X to the third, good. Negative six X squared times two is gonna be negative 12 X squared. So you can see it would multiply out correctly. Okay, so now we're gonna go just to some application examples, a little bit tougher but same uh, principles apply, okay? You'll see these in the, in the notes, so I'm gonna kinda skip over the verbiage here and get right to uh, the nitty gritty. So what's the area of the uh, shaded region? So we've seen these problems before, this one might just be a little bit more complicated. So basically we wanna do that shaded, 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 shaded. So we wanna do area of the square minus area of the circle there. 
That's our strategy, square minus circle. Okay, so the square is gonna be pretty easy. Put S for square, and then the area is just uh, length times width, or side length squared. Side length is 2x, so that's gonna be 4x squared, okay? And then the area of my circle, here's where it gets a little bit more complicated. Uh, circle is area equals pi times radius squared. Okay, we know that from the past. So, so pi times x squared. And we're just gonna leave pi in terms of pi here. So just pi x squared. So now we do this minus this. 4x squared minus pi x squared. And then they want you to just simplify that. Sorry, forgot to scroll down for you. Uh, so 4x squared minus pi x squared. And then they want you to uh, factor out your GCF. So uh, write it as uh, x squared is their common factor times the quantity 4 minus pi. All right, and then, you know, I don't, I don't know if you'll need to here. Usually it's done for you on Math Excel, but sometimes they want you to put something like square units since it's area. All right, but the big thing is that you get to the x squared minus, uh, times the quantity 4 minus pi. All right, and then our last example. Again, find the shaded region. So in this case, we want to do, sorry, I can't fit all that on there. Be nice if I could move that over, but oh well. So, but basically what we wanna do, it's the same as the last one. We wanna do this big rectangle minus the smaller rectangle giving us uh, the shaded region. Okay, these two are just text boxes, so don't get confused. Those are just part of the shaded region, just so we can see those dimensions. So strategy here, sorry about that. So our strategy here is that we're gonna do big minus little. That's usually the case on those, uh, on these find the area of the shaded region problems. So big guy is gonna be length times width. So that is going to be 5y times the quantity 3y plus 7, which equals 15y squared plus 35y. And then our little guy is 3y times the quantity 3y plus 5, which is going to give us 9y squared plus 15y. Okay, so now I do big. And then hopefully you remember this from 8-1. If we, if we subtract two terms, then we have got to put those in parentheses. If not, then we're gonna do it wrong. Because again, there we think we distribute the negative. So that's actually a minus 9y squared. That's actually a minus 15y. So 15y squared minus 9y squared, those are like terms, so I add their coefficients. 15 plus negative 9 is 6. So 6y squared. Uh, and then these two are like terms as well. So I have 35 plus negative 15, or 35 minus 15. That'd be positive 20. So plus 20y. Uh, and then the last step is we just want to uh, we just want to factor out that greatest common factor, uh, and that'll be my final answer. So greatest common factor of these two looks like two y. So two y times the quantity three y plus ten. Make sure that's right. Okay, looks good. Go ahead and box that in as our final answer. 
And so that will conclude our video. Like I said, feel free to use these videos as much as you would like uh, or not use them if the notes are enough. Uh, and we'll kind of get through this together. But make sure, guys, that you communicate if you have questions. I think that's going to be the biggest key for all of us. Uh, and besides that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. And hopefully uh, these videos are helpful for you guys. Have a good one. Stay safe out there.